Drugs used to fight HIV have side effects. Some of the drugs change lipid levels in the blood. One of the complications that we have seen with the use of antiretroviral agents is elevation in what are called serum lipids, triglycerides, cholesterol. Lipids are fats which play important roles in the body, but studies show high levels of lipids can cause harm. In the non-HIV population, it is well documented that elevation in cholesterol, for example, can cause cardiovascular events such as myocardial infarction, cerebrovascular accidents, which is strokes. And we presume that a patient that is HIV that also have elevation in triglycerides and cholesterol will run the same uh, type of uh, problems. Not all drugs used against HIV have the same impact on lipid levels. You have two types of cholesterol broadly. Uh, the good cholesterol, which is called HDL, high-density cholesterol, and low-density cholesterol, which tends to be the one associated with risk of future heart disease. Protease inhibitors tend to push up the bad cholesterol without having much impact on the good cholesterol. Now we're noting that other drugs in other classes, specifically the NRTIs or the nucleoside analogs, are associated with elevations in serum lipids as well. When we look at combinations that involve non-nucleoside drugs like efavirenz or nevirapine, they tend to cause changes in the lipids also, but mostly what we're seeing there is a rise in the good cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol, and only a more modest increase in the LDL cholesterol. Until recently, most protease inhibitors seem to elevate blood lipids, but there are now drugs that may not carry that same risk. For the most part, all protease inhibitors has been associated with elevation in triglyceride and cholesterol. But recently, new protease inhibitors in the market has been uh, developed that actually do not have this particular complication. For example, a new protease inhibitor with the name of Reyetas was developed and has not been associated with an increase in the triglycerides and cholesterol. When lipid levels do rise, Lifestyle changes are often a doctor's first recommendation. When we are coming up with treatment strategies for elevated serum lipids, the first thing that we always do before we in go to drugs is to put patients on a diet that's low in fat and to exercise them. Diet and exercise have a, a role to play. And I mean, I do say to patients, you know, walk, walk to work and, and use stairs and don't eat and do regular exercise. The results are, are not always that successful, although it's clearly the easiest place to start. Um, a lot more needs to be done in most people. Doing a lot more sometimes means taking drugs called statins. The major drugs that we use to treat elevated uh, serum lipids are drugs which are called statins, which interact with certain of the enzymes that are used by the body to metabolize uh, fat. And so they can substantially lower the, the levels of triglycerides or cholesterol. Statins is probably the first, uh, your first port of call. Um, there's some concerns that they may not be quite as potent in people with HIV as in people without, although that's very difficult to prove one way or the other. Furthermore, sometimes there can be harmful drug interactions with protease inhibitors. Protease inhibitors inhibit some enzymes in the liver that they're used to break down these statins. So sometimes we cannot use some protease inhibitors and some statin medications. When lipid levels cannot be adequately controlled with lifestyle changes or drugs, switching antiretroviral medications is sometimes an option. Luckily, that can often be done without interfering with the course of HIV treatment. While we use this strategy, we really need to be assured that the drugs that the patients are currently on are working, that we have the virus under very tight control, and then switching to another agent should not be a problem. And in fact, switching studies have been done which have demonstrated that you can switch drugs with a patient who has good control of viral replication. Concern today over lipid levels in people with HIV in part reflects good news that HIV drugs now can be very effective. Now that patients are living longer, the potential complications of having an elevated triglyceride and cholesterol over time, over five years, 10 years, 15 years, become something that we need to consider and not ignore any longer. Luckily, for most people with HIV, there are good strategies to lower these lipid levels, whether it's simple changes in diet and exercise, the use of lipid-reducing drugs, or using antiretrovirals less likely to cause the problem.